striper candy. March 15th, Secondary Creek, dock light, water temp 60 degrees, fish are not here. We did get a good bit of rain today, that might be why, but we're trying to pattern the fish. We're probably going to go try the main creek, try something off the main creek, and then we'll try to something off of the main river channel and try to get a pattern on these fish, see what they're doing. Not bad. Okay, welcome to the show, guys. Pete, Wes, do you have? Do you guys have a good weekend? Worked, but yeah, not bad. Oh man, you worked all weekend. Do you work all weekend too, Wes? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, I went fishing twice. Uh, me no. and Bobby went out to Lake Norman Friday night. I think it was Friday night, and uh, I said it in the video. I think it was the fifteenth. And uh, we didn't have any problems catching bait. Uh, it's the water's still pretty dirty, uh, above 150, and uh, we we were having better luck um, all, off the main river channel fishing uh, docks at night than we were in a lot of our spots in, are on secondary creeks off Lake Norman. And I don't know. I feel like the water temp. I said 60 degrees in the video, but it was actually. I would say the water temp, a true water temp <laughs> right now would probably be 58. Well, that was Friday night. So at, we we had a, we got pretty cold last night. So it's probably back down into 50, 56, 57, first thing in the morning. So we're still a little early. It's not, there's no spring bite yet. Uh, there has been a, a few fish start to move up shallow, but nothing. <laughs> I can't no, wait until we get that 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 uh that 65 degree water temp and then we kind of we get a peak moon and then we get a little front come in we get some rain we get the water starts to rise and it's the, that spring bite just comes into full effect that's really what i'm waiting on won't be long man yeah. so uh, uh i named the show uh uh something about uh dirty water versus uh clear water and here, here's an interesting fact. I'm going to start to show off with a very interesting fact that I was very surprised when I learned this uh, the other day. Biologists have done a study on trout. And did you guys know that trout feed more during low clear water conditions? They've done stomach samples from trout in all these different conditions. And the trout stomach contents had more food in them during low clear water conditions now that might explain why because you know when it when it's turbid when the water's rising the trout the trout are lazy they they don't really like fighting a lot of current you'll you when there's a lot when there's a good flow you'll find the the trout up on the banks and i think that's why a lot of these guys target the trophy stripers in tennessee up on the banks you think there's any 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 correlate correlation with with that wes uh, I don't we, know. I, my daddy used to trout fish, but most of the trout he always caught was in rivers that had a pretty good flow to it. Always well, a, a lot, you've done a lot of striper fishing in Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Has a, has a lot of your fishing been like in high current situations? No. Okay. I know uh, when I went to Middle Tennessee with the Shad Shack group, we, uh, we ended up going up uh, a, a river that had a pretty good amount of current. And it seemed like every fish we caught was on a planter board right up on the bank. And uh, these, these were rivers with trout trout are native native in these rivers. So these uh, I think these trout were getting up into on the bank, whether just to get out of the current. Gotcha. Maybe that's, maybe now, that's why those fish were feeding up there. I don't know the damn thing about trout, but something tells me that maybe when the water's dirty, that means, you know, there's been a lot of flow, a lot of rain, a lot of runoff and perhaps whatever they eat is washing in the creeks per chance and maybe they're taking advantage of eating as much as they can maybe mm -hmm. try that as well possibly i don't know yeah i think when you got high water conditions so you get a lot of uh stuff a lot of plants a lot of growth a lot of brush a lot of trees and stuff that isn't normally underwater during high flow conditions you get a lot of new bugs and stuff are getting washed up from out of the ground so yeah i think 
And the only reason that I've kind of looked into trout is because Tennessee, especially Middle Tennessee, there's a trout are native, and the stripers are feeding on trout. So I kind of like to, you know, look at what my bait fish are doing. Gotcha. Possibly it's a correlation. <clears throat> well, James, I mean, JR, I guess you remember, well, I don't know how many times you fished a caney, but when we pulled a caney, I don't think I've ever caught a fish in the middle of the river. When we pull boards, we try to keep the boards as closest to the bank as you can get them every day. And we're fishing the caney is more... It's more of a job working planter boards than anything, letting them in, letting them out, letting them in, letting them out. And that makes sense because the more more than likely, if you're fishing the caney in a boat, then you probably got a hefty amount of um, uh, what do you call a CFM, the cubic the amount of water that's being released. You got a pretty good flow if you're able to fish the caney in a boat. So you know, like what I was saying earlier, with the trout not liking the current. A lot of the trout are moving up to the banks, ice cream up here. and I think that that's probably why you're you're having more success up on the banks. So what did you guys fishing catch? Fishing the is a job. Two days of fishing on Norman. Do what? So what did you guys catch the last two days of fishing on Norman? You do pretty good. Me? Uh, yeah. Me and Spivey. Me and Spivey, we just went Friday night. Friday night. That's the, only, that's the only time we went. Yeah, I went to Wiley Sunday. And uh, we limited out on crappy. We caught 40, 40 good crappy. We were throwing back. We were throwing back 10 inch crappy. Nice. Yeah, it was uh it was a good trip. You know, it's it's not I wouldn't call it on fire. It's 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 far from being on fire. We had to work for them. Gotcha. But, What's the average size crappy on uh, Wiley right now? I remember back when I fished pretty heavy, it was pretty consistently. I want to say it was late 90s, early 2000s. We're catching pound and three quarter to two and a half pound fish regular. And then my last few years, it's like that, you know, that big fish cycle ended and it was all like nine to 11 inches pretty much. Wasn't occasional big fish thrown in there, but uh, has it uh, gotten better as far as the big fish? Well, from... When I small. say big fish, we'll say pound three quarter or bigger. No, um, it's not as good as it was uh, five years ago. Uh, now it seems like there's not a lot of in between crappy. You're either catch you're catching a lot of uh, nine and ten inch crappy, and or uh, 14, 15 inch crappy. It's like there's not. Gotcha. Big, yeah. Yeah, you're getting. That's not a good thing, by the way, according to biologists. If you. Uh, catch several different groups of fish or, you know, one mm -hmm. big and one small and that median is uh, missing, then that's not a very healthy fishery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, what's going on, Scott? Welcome to the show, buddy. What's up? What's up? So, what, so what's your favorite water clarity, man? If you had to choose, say you're just going striper fishing tomorrow, what would you prefer? Would you prefer a little a little dingy and the, the water to be a little dirty, maybe on the rise uh, or, or some low clear water or, or what? Ah. Uh. In a lake, yeah, probably just slightly stained, not crystal clear, not muddy. Yep, yep. I, 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 I'm the same way. I would, I would prefer the water to be on the rise and and it's for it to be a little dirty. You know, not not so dirty that I think this this is actually here. Here's a theory for you on Lake Norman. I think that Lake Norman Lake Norman is in fact a clear water lake. Correct, Pete. Correct. It's a it's a clear water mountainous uh, lake, and usually there's at least ten feet visibility. Sometimes fifteen. Hell, sometimes sometimes up to twenty feet of visi visibility on Lake Norman. So, I, and that's uh, that is most of the time. And I think when you have a clear water lake that is that clear most of the time, I think that those fish they become they adapt they become. Uh, visual 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 uh hunters they're they're hunting on site site hunters and i think that when you go you take a clear water lake then you get a lot of rain you get a lot of flow and uh it, it makes the water dirty i think that that's one of the biggest reasons lake norman the bite gets turned off in that dirty water is because those fish are used to feeding in clear water now they can feed in dingy water you know they have a lateral line they can sense vibrations and they can pick up on scents. They can do all that stuff. But 
I don't think I think that they have to, and it's the opposite. Like say for, I don't know, Lake, Lake Watery. Lake Watery is a dingy lake. I think a lot of those fish probably are more likely to. If you go, if you were to go pull live bait on Lake Watery, I would suggest maybe using some glass Easy. beads on your Carolina rig. If you're going to work artificials, maybe work uh, artificial that's got some beads, some some kind of noise, making some kind of noise to attract, to help attract the fish. Because you guys know as well as I do, it, when that water's dirty, uh, if if you're going by, if you're using a small bait, you pretty much got to get it right on right in front of their face for them to eat it. And that's that's another reason to use bigger baits too, is because they have a larger profile and it's easier for the fish to find in dirty water. I have a theory on Lake Norman as to why they don't bite at certain times, um, especially let's say above 150 or even above the hot hole. Um, you talk about dirty water, and the direct correlation of dirty water is heavy rain, right? Yep. All right, and that normally happens in the winter time, right? Yes. So again, this is just me talking about Lake Norman and my many years of fishing out there. But I feel like when these fish just shut down, they lock up. I have a feeling it has a lot more to do with mountain runoff than it does actual rain or dirty water. I feel like it, it takes a sudden shock of, you know, water temperature may drop uh, five degrees because of the colder runoff way upstream that is entering the lake. And it just completely shuts Now, down. let me interrupt you here. Now, are you really, are you referring to more of a wintertime bite or oh, are yeah, you? Yeah, more, yeah, more wintertime for sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because we, we are in late winter. We're coming up on yes. early spring. Correct. And so... I think as we get on into spring a little bit, you know, things like that may not factor in as, as much. I'm going to tell you the right person to ask about all this mud versus not uh, in the spring is Lee Huffman because he loves mud on Lake Norman in the river. Does he? Okay. Yes, he does. Well, we should have, we need to, we need to send him an invite. I'm not sure. I think he's working. He's been off all weekend long, but okay. uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I know uh, Sperry, Sperry, oh God, I'm sorry. Scott uh, fishes uh, current, uh, he fishes the river portion of lakes. Uh, a good bit of his fishing in recent years has predominantly been on uh, uh, in current situations on the upper end of reservoirs. And uh, he, I think you mainly cut bait, don't you, Scott? But you do pull live bait sometimes. I usually pull a lot, but especially in the mornings. In the mornings. But, I mean, the only reason, I mean, the main reason I fish there is so I can release the fish. Now, do you have a pretty good change? you have a change in uh, depth while they're running water? Like, are, are there some areas, let's say, that they're running uh, the, uh, the amount of water, and let's say at, like, 10 o'clock in the morning, this area might be six foot deep. But by three o'clock in the afternoon, it could be a couple feet higher or a couple feet lower. Is that it, the case? No, it don't really rise much. Does maybe it really fluctuate like that. Maybe six inches or a foot at the most. But I don't like pulling bait in current, not because it don't work. Just I don't like doing it. It's a lot of work. I'm usually by myself. But uh, and you got to pull with the current. You can't pull up current. So. I cut bait a lot, but usually when the current hits, I follow I follow the uh, temperature line down the river if I'm pulling bait. Yeah, I, go ahead, Pete. So Perry, as far as river fishing, you know, let's say early spring, late winter, maybe. Do you ever run a river like a long section, say ten miles, whatever, and you keep on running and running, and then you find a certain water temperature, and you're like, hey. I'm going to drop them right here now because I see 49 or it went from 46 to 50. And you're like, all right, I like what I see. Well, normally in the, I usually don't fish the rivers in the winter because I feel like the water is too cold to push the bait down. I usually fish the lower lake in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Now it's like Tennessee. I know sometimes it gets so cold. It'll push the fish away from, you know, their upper ends too in the winter. You really don't want to be up the river in the wintertime mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because, I mean, the water is already cold and then it's coming out even colder at the bottom of the reservoir above. So it's it might be 40, 40 degrees or less up the river. Mm -hmm. So I've, I usually pull the lower end, which is pretty consistent temperature um, in the winter. 
Todd I, Asher said he's seen water right down there below uh, on 61 Ferry. He's yeah. seen water one year. It was 35 degrees down there at Eagle Bend Boat Ramp. 35 degree water. Oh, wow. That's cold, buddy. Nothing's living in that. I, even a microorganism. <laughs> <living. laughs> Trout live in it. Gizzard shall live in it. I will fish muddy water, di real, extremely dirty water. I don't mind fishing it at, at all if it's warmer. You know, if it's 60 degrees up, you know, at least upper 50, 60. Once it gets down, you know, 50 and below, and I am finding muddy, you know, very dirty water, I'm going, I'm trying, my, I'm trying to find some clearer water. I'm heading down lake until I can find some water that's got some more visibility to it. Like if, I, if I'm looking at a foot, a foot or less than a foot visibility, and 50 degree water i'm not i'm not fishing that i don't I, I try not to ever fish like what i call chocolate milk yeah uh, now, I, I have caught striper in in pretty much chocolate milk but gotta hit him you in know, the face. it was you know the water temp what it was like i think it was springtime and then the water temp had probably pushed above 60 you know I, yeah like you said you got to hit it you got to hit him in the face you know i know a lot of times when you say you get a big rainstorm three or four days out and you get there and the the creeks are all muddy you know that mud line's always good where the where the water color changes and you can see it riding on the lake it's, it's almost like a trash line i guess in the ocean but the mud line always seems to be good hey james they do have an app that you can look at on temperatures for the ocean um uh what's the name of that app pete that uh you and Keith used to look at well, actually the one y'all was using that night when we before we left Keith's house. I think it's uh, called Satfish or something. Yeah, Satfish. Yeah, a lot of the ocean apps James have. Uh, they keep up with the water temperature out there. I don't know about freshwater though. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jay. Oh, Jr. By the way, uh, we got blew out to. We we're supposed to be going to Venice for four days Thursday. Yeah. Uh, the weather the weather's blew us out for two days, so we're gonna mm -hmm. try to do one day offshore and another day inshore. Mm -hmm. So Mike's supposed to be calling me back here shortly and let me know. So if you hear my phone ring, don't go all to hell on the notifications. I just want to let you know my phone's going to ring. Oh, that, no, no, you're good. I, I done figured you out, man. I went to edit mic settings on you, Wes, and I turned on reduce uh, mic background noise, and it has helped tremendously. I I literally did it about five minutes into the show because you got a well, hell of a mic. that on Daryl Barney? That's what I'm going to do <laughs> next time he comes on. That's what I'll do, but... <laughs> It helped tremendously because uh, you got a <coughs> mic on your headphones there, man. I was picking up everything. For two hundred yeah. fucking dollars, they should pick up everything. Heather, Heather got me a hat for my birthday. Look. Oh my gosh, North, North River. River! That is a nice hat. Is that a Richardson? Uh, Richardson one twelve. One twelve. Yep. Uh, here's a little clip from. Uh, this is uh, Lake Murray, and the water was. Uh, yep. It was pretty. Uh, here's a little clip. Damn was. Well. Damn well. And, uh, um, oh, yeah. Every every week. I don't remember week. what time of the year it was. I'm assuming I'm, I'm assuming it was probably spring, early spring. And uh, we, me and a friend of mine, I took uh, my buddy Jared. This is when I had my scout, and uh, we stopped by Jerry Jones, Jimmy Jones, and uh, rest in peace, Jimmy. Everybody, I miss Jimmy. We every that's everybody around here. That's where we got our bait was was Jimmy. It was the only place really you could. He got he got everybody's uh herring. You know you we, you got Jamie K, but Jamie K doesn't really have blueback herring. He's not really focused on striper fishermen. He's more for cat fishermen. But Jimmy was the striper guy. Man. So we stopped by Jimmy's. We went to Lake Murray. Just a quick little day trip. We actually went up into the rivers. I want to say we fished the Big Saluda. And we were just pulling boards and uh, pulling uh, blueback herring, and the water was muddy. And uh, I knew that we weren't going to catch many fish, but I was just hoping we'd catch a few good ones. And we did. We caught uh, two good fish uh, that day. Uh, Jared's was a little bigger than mine, but here's here's a little clip of that trip. Clarity is good enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the clarity, it actually is muddier than what it looks like, but it was pretty muddy. You see those little decent little stripes. Hey, what was that, 20 years ago? I don't that's recognize been, that guy. That's been a minute. Yeah, I didn't, that, I didn't have near as much clarity. 
above the bridge or below the bridge? That was below. No. Um, I want to say that was probably below a little wider. Yeah, I, I, I want to say it was just below. No, dude, we're not going to fish in eight footers, but we, there's one day that's going to be flat. So we may do offshore one day and inshore one day. Uh, the only good thing is it'll be a lot cheaper. So, um, but I'll let you know as soon as I hear from Mike. You better not fuck up because, damn, your shit will be blasted online. <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, we don't measure nothing down there. We just <laughs> damn. put it in the box. <laughs> So normally Murray does it, Murray does get a little dirty up the rivers and you can still catch a lot of good fish. But. Yeah, yeah. It's that fine line. If it gets too dirty, you might as well get it's the help. uh it's a lot easier to fool a fish in a tail race. You're you're you can go up there, I mean you can have a, a steel leader, you know, and you cast it up in the boils, it gets getting kicked around the fish. I think in tail race, more reaction bite where, you know, they see the food like, oh, shit, let me get it now before it's, it gets away from me kind of thing. Exactly. It's a lot harder in calm water when they got time to look at it. You know, that's kind of why that's one of the reasons you want the water to be a little dingy is because you don't want those fish being able to just sit there and, you know, scope out your bait. You know, they, they, they're, they're going to be like, you know, this isn't natural. I'm not going to eat that. You know, you know one big you know, you know solution is, as far as catching fish in muddy water. What? Live scope. Get you some live scope. Do it. Go ahead, go ahead, Wes. We didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, I, no, I was just going to say one of the big drawbacks. So, you know, in the wintertime, me and Scott was talking earlier, uh, you know, in the wintertime, especially when it's cold, uh, you know, we, we like to stain water. Dingy water is really, I, I like it because it warms up quicker, you know, especially when the water's cold. But it's, it's really a big drawback in the summer because when the water is already you know, a certain temperature and you're trying to find cooler water and then you're trying to fish muddy water in the summer, you're pissing in the wind. Um, Cause that water is going to be a whole lot warmer in the summer than it will in the winter. It's, it's just the opposite effect. Uh, I won't fish muddy water in the summertime. I won't even go fish unless you downline it in like a hundred foot of water. I wish I could get my old fishing partner out here. Cause if I pulled into a Creek and it was dingy, He'd be putting out bait. We ain't going to catch shit in it. We ain't going to catch shit in the damn dirty ass water. He hated it. Really? I know who that is. <laughs> Mike. Mike Jones. Oh, I was going to say Walker. No. No, Sumo. Oh, Sumo. Okay. Sumo. Mike right, Walker let's... fish in, in a damn five-gallon bucket full of shit if he thought he'd catch a fish. Michael Walker's bait tank was dirty in that water you were fishing. <laughs> damn. Damn. Uh oh. Damn. Oh shit. Oh, uh, sucky, sucky now. Hey, yeah, I oh, forgot shit. to turn the volume. Let the shit talk begin. All right, move that camera up. We don't want to look at your chest. Yeah, how to turn the volume down, man. Turn it up. Crank it. No, uh, we can't crank it up. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Chris. This is Chris Hovis, everybody. Um, we, I'm glad been, nobody knows me. We've been talking about, everybody knows you. We've been talking about uh, conditions and like extreme conditions, like when you you got too much flow, we've had a crap ton of rain, the, the, the dams are flooding. You know, you probably don't want to go striper fishing in, in extreme conditions on either side of it, where that whether the water is extremely low and extremely clear or extremely high and extremely muddy. You probably want to go when the water's kind of on the rise and the water's got a little stain to it, it's a little dirty. Um, you have fished Tennessee a good bit, Chris. What would you think? Uh, Fish some low water too. What is a what is a good? You guys, you guys have heard of CFS? Is it CFS? Is it cube? Is cubic feet per second? I think is what they, uh, how they calculate the amount of uh, water coming out of a dam. What is a good CFS up in Tennessee? Well, first off, Peter, what you smirking at? I'm laughing at his comment right here about uh, your camera is too low. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a deer catfish picture. Yeah. I mean, it's a tiny bit low, but it looks great. You're perfectly in frame. You look good. Oh, you look no, you look good. What they're saying is yeah, they're making no, fun no, of his good. ass for overcompensating for his height. What it is? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like he's like six foot four. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Peter looks like Beetlejuice because all you see is his head. 
<laughs> Ain't got a window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's springtime. He's rocking yeah. that yellow wall. <laughs> um, what'd you ask? What'd you say, Jr? No, we're talking about CFM. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's CFS. Cubic feet per second. See, there you go, CFS. <laughs> and it depends on the dam, right? Am we, I correct? Yeah, because I mean, if you're, um, you know, you know where we mainly fish, Cordell Hall and Caney Fork, and if you're in, if you're fishing the main river, Cordell Hall, I mean. 25 or 30. I mean, if you're wanting to fish some current, you know, because out there, 10 or 12 is nothing. You know, just like if you're behind loud and you, if you're behind loud and you want 30,000 plus, you want it blowing. If you know, if now, you I've noticed that when style. I went, when I went with you up there, uh, it seems like I remember we, I, quick, quick little story. Uh, one of the biggest fish I've ever hooked up with in my life, I lost it. I was on, I was Me on. Too. I was on Hobus's boat. We were up in uh, Middle Tennessee. We were fishing. Yeah, he had a boat. Oh, sorry. And I, it was a it was a it was a dream opportunity. It was a big cat fever spinning rod with a Stratic eight thousand with braid and uh, free totally free lined with a big Gamakatsu river hook on it. And I want, I want to say it was a smaller size skipjack, I think is what we had on that rod. And that was one of the short rods. And I think we had just come across a point and I hooked up and I, I'm holding this rod and this son, it's, I'm about to get spooled. I mean, I've never felt, uh, this kind of speed and speed and this speed and power combination I've never felt before in, in fresh water. And I ended up losing it. He got it. He got me into some uh, brush and he ended up pulling the hook. And uh, I, I wanted to crank down on the drag, but, Shit. you know, I got, I got, I got uh, Shane real in my ear saying, don't touch that drag. Don't touch that drag. That drag's perfect. Don't touch that drag. You know, pulling a West Rose on me. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, but everything inside of me is telling me to tighten that drag. And I didn't, and I couldn't slow him down. He got me in some brush and pulled the hook. Had had I been able to fight the fish the way I wanted to, I would have landed the fish. Anyways, um, I forget I forget really where I was going with that. Oh, I know what I was going. I know what I was going to say now. The it, it was right there on a point around some brush is where we hooked up with that fish. And I think that you know their trout are native up there. I think that those big trophy striper up there feeding on trout. You know, of course they're feeding on skipjack, uh, gizzard shad. You know, thread fan. You know, feeding on everything, but. I think that they are, especially the bigger they get, they become ambush predators. A lot of noise going on, fellas, whoever that is. They become ambush predators the bigger they get. You know, when they're smaller and they're schooled up, you know, they could be feeding on threadfin. You know, they're just out there opportunistic. They're just out there chasing bait. As they get bigger, they get lazy. They start to become more of an ambush predator. And I think that that's when... You want me to go ahead and finish it up, Scott? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> my my point is, these the, the fish that I hooked up with was was feeding on on trout, and I think that when that when the water when the river is flowing, those trout are getting up on these points, they're getting up on these these uh, current breaks and getting out of the current because they too are lazy, and I think that's when these uh, these, these stripers are up in there and they are actually uh, uh, ambush ambushing these big trout. Here I'm gonna sum it up for you, Perry. Perry, we came over. We came over one of them gravel bar flats. First off, you're in a little small river, and you really, if you're really wanting that trophy, you shouldn't be have a spinning rod out to begin with because you ain't bull, gonna stop it. bull crap. So, uh, spinning rods or spinning reels are more powerful than conventional reel. You can catch no, a, reel. Uh, uh, a spinning reel is more powerful than a. Oh, I'm following. Yeah, 100%. We, okay, you can catch so, bluefin. Uh, you can catch thousand pound bluefin tuna on a freaking spinning reel. But wait, I want to hear. I want to hear. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Can you throw up a picture of that fish? Can you throw up a picture of that fish? Listen, <laughs> so I told you why the fish got off. Hey, there I got to have one off. comment real quick. I got one comment here. So yeah. I walked off in the kitchen and I heard the story about, you know, this, the one that got away and I heard <laughs> speed and power. I knew right away he wasn't talking about a fucking catfish. Because <laughs> it did. It was it was a short it was a short line too. And when it hit, he was gone. He didn't have a prayer. Yeah. 
He didn't have a prayer. <laughs> he did land like a 12 pounder that weekend though. Yeah, made, made a hell of a 25 minute video on that short turn. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's thank goodness. Thank goodness Skipper set the hook for him. <laughs> what a, what a great video. Catch it off? Whose rod was it on? Was it spinning rod? No that was yeah, on was one of uh, Shane. That was on one of. Now that's well, spinning. Yeah, that's spinning reels, Shane's. Yeah, the spinning, spinning reels, reels are lost. fun, but you kind of got to be out in open water where you can fight it. You can't be in the river. And a well, 40 you're you're one hundred percent wrong on that, but. Anyways, Dieter gave me a compliment on that video. Once again, can you show me that picture of that fish? <laughs> Damn. I told you why I lost that fish. It had nothing to do with the reel. Dieter gave me a compliment on that video I made, though. He said, "He said I don't know how the hell you did it. I think you got lucky, but you actually said, told a good story on that. He said, better luck next time. I know. I got a quick story. We I went up with Chris to Tennessee, and he had his free line rides up front, the blue ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're sitting there cut baiting with like these shark hooks, <laughs> and and I just I glance up at the front of these free line rods, and he's got like a two odd hook on their thing, and I'm like, what are these for? And he's like, no, nah, them hooks will surprise you. But I have a feeling he wanted us to hook up, but not get him to the boat. That's what was going to surprise us. Mm. And then what? And then what did him and Miller do? <laughs> Because they gone, <laughs> they gone. Because. It's, it's just a. It, it was. I don't know if it was their first trip to to the to the to a big fish river like that or what it was, but it was just the. It was the South Carolina in them that just had to kill the fish. <laughs> she gone, and Walker was with us. South Carolina and Alabama trash. <laughs> so I'm sure when the fish came up, it was like, hey. Uh, Oh, Chris and Walker were like, I was sitting there for like 15 minutes trying to get this fish to, to swim off. We literally off. fished. I don't know if y'all, you really know, but we probably, we probably floated two miles uh -huh. about halfway to the dam. We floated from about there all the way almost to the Caney Fork. Uh -huh. Trying to get that fish to kick. <laughs> Do you guys and, remember when, uh. Wait, uh, I'm not done. Oh, I'm not done. I'm so, sorry, so, so, uh, <laughs> so. Two minutes in, Walker's like, throw it in the bottom of the boat. It's dead. And then <laughs> 10 minutes in, Chris is like, I don't think it's going to make it, Shane, real. <laughs> so why that fish, that fish just must have said, fuck it, I'm done. But it did. He did it not did. want to go back. It All did. right, go ahead, Silver Fox. Do you guys remember, um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the guy with the big old red beard? Big Walker. Guy. No, big guy, big guy. He got out of the chain gang, then he got back in it. Oh, uh, Kevin Blue? No, the yes. dude from George. Kevin Blue. No, Kevin Blue. That's it. Oh. You guys remember when he pulled his boat all the way to Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and rode 27 miles to the dam, or maybe that was round trip. I don't know. But And, and he got skunked. It was like heavy flow conditions. I don't remember what time of the year it was. I think it was springtime. But uh, and then turn around and went back home. I want to say he went back home the same day. Like he drove all the way to Middle Tennessee, drove like twenty miles to the dam, turned around and came back, trailered his boat, drove all the way back home same day. I well, think I, I would have stayed another day. I think I he him. parked his boat and bought golf clubs after that. <laughs> it killed him. But why would you drive twenty miles to the dam? I was going to ask where. Well, I mean, did he put in? Did he put in in Nashville? He actually. <laughs> Drove, rode his boat to the dam. That's how much flow there was Where did he on, on, that, that, on that river. Yeah. Where but, did he put in at, JR, is what they're saying? Uh, I guess he put in on the Cumberland and rode all the way to the dam. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. The Caney. Yeah, and he, he, he just uh, he didn't have to stop. I mean, that's how much flow they had. That's how high the water was. Chris, don't stop when the water's low. You just hold on to the side and press <laughs> Well, Chris is smart. He he gets up there when the water's on the rise. Well, he can say to stop that. and to drag it over sandbars. Uh, Chris, Chris, speaking of speak, you know how everybody used to talk shit about you beaching the boat a couple of times and getting out and pushing. Ask Scott what happened with him the last time he came to Tennessee with me. We've got T's big fat drunk ass on the boat. Uh, date, what's that guy's name? The race car driver, T's hero. 
JD. J JD. Yeah, JD's on the boat. He's hung over drunk or hell. He's still on the boat with a head about this big. Daniel Skipper's back there talking shit to tell you. Scott's still about hung over. Tell him what you no, did, okay. Scott. So we were back. Tell we were back. Right get stuck in the river. No, we were on Cordo. Oh, we got stuck on the lake. <laughs> Wes said, I don't know this lake you drive, Scott. And I said, I got it. And I can't remember the name of that. I can't remember the name of that creek, but we got fishing. It was Fishing Creek. No. 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 It wasn't. Fishing yeah, Creek's down there. On fishing, creek. fishing Creek's right above Watery. No, it wasn't right? Fishing Creek. No, uh, it was. Uh, and what was the name of that creek? Scott? Yeah, tell us, Chris. Flynn's Lake. Well, that's where we started. Flynn's Lake. That's where we started, but we went we went south to Martin's. No, it was on the right down there. But there's a there's a big sandbar in the mouth oh. of it. Warrior, hey, no, but, 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 but before anyhow. before Scott before Scott tells the story, let me add this: there's an old man and a woman sitting over on a pontoon boat, steady doing like this. <laughs> and and D, waving back at him. Yeah, and D and Daniel <laughs> waving back at him. <laughs> and they're jumping up and down trying to say, slow. Go ahead and tell the story, Scott. Mm -hmm. Well, I just turned in the mouth of the creek and it got real shallow real fast. Real quick. <laughs> that was basically. <laughs> and I had to get out and push the boat loose. And nobody else would get out of the boat. No, hold on now. We hit that soundboard. JD raised up to what was that? <laughs> you know how people say bigger bait, bigger fish, you know, and sometimes I do believe that is true. Probably most of the time, but you know, the whole elephants eat peanuts thing, you know, that's true too. People catch big fish on small baits. Now, Hovis, you, when you, when you're surfing, uh, let's say you mentioned, you mentioned the caney fork earlier. Let's say you're, you'll say you're fishing the caney fork for a trophy striper. Hey, and there's a there's a good bit of flow you know you're trolling along at, at you know three miles an hour coming you know with the current you got your boards out and uh you're you're fishing larger baits and i think the reason that you have success with those larger baits isn't necessarily because they're because the fish are wanting hey, something can you not hear no, I, I just want to make sure I hear it off. Go ahead. Okay. I, I, I don't, I, I think that the reason, because because when there's a high flow rate. Where's that Wes. coming from? That's Wes's. That's not me. <laughs> yeah, please close that door. You'll have JR going all to hell here in a minute. <laughs> Damn. Um. <sighs> wow, that's a nice deer. That, that wasn't Lincoln County. That was the house. house. You, know, uh, you ain't got a fucking boat. Did you hit that in the car? That was the one that was eating his garden a couple of years ago. <laughs> I think I think the reason you're having a good success rate on the larger baits, whether it be big skipjack or big trout, because I've seen the trout you use, they're huge. And uh, I think the reason you're having those those success rates is because the fish aren't really keying in on uh vision there because the you know you got a lot of flow you know so it's not clear water if you got a lot of flow the water ain't clear the water is at the very least going to be dingy dirty so i think that i think that those larger baits are displacing a lot more water you know they they have a no, bigger AJ, no J, hey jr i've been on the caney when it was rolling like thunder and that water beats are clear you can see six eight feet down in it you see the bottom i mean it's no Oh really? Oh, eight eight feet that. deep. Now I know that it is clear Five and six, shallow. I've seen the Katy rolling and you could still see the bottom and six and eight feet of water. I know on the Catawba when it's rolling, you can it's very clear and shallow in the shallow portions, but in the deeper portions it's not. So you're I, saying there ain't no deeper portions of the Katy. So you're saying that the <laughs> so <they ain't. laughs> All right, well, then that theory is blown. No, I want to hear what you finish it. You were saying that it's not because they're big, it's because they displace a lot of water? Yes, uh, they're, because they're, 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 it's a lateral line bite. The, they, the fish are, are getting the vibrations. They're getting, uh, uh, whereas they would not be able to see the silhouette on a smaller bait in dingier water, but with it being a larger profile bait, they're actually able to silhouette the bait, and plus it's displacing a lot more water, so they're getting a lot of lateral line, they're getting a lot of vibrations, they're picking up on that bait that way instead of visually. 
Well, I don't believe a big fish is going to target little bait unless it's just like a thread fin kill or something. They're going to go after the biggest bait they can, they can find. What if but there are no elephants? Elephants do eat peanuts. But what if there are no elephants? <laughs> then you're wasting your time pulling that big bait. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see you pull a thread fin in three mile an hour current. That thing would look good. Well, that's a, um, you know, that's, you got a good point there. I mean, how, how capable is a, you know, a, a regular four, let's say four to four to six inch thread fin or, or blue bag herring, how capable are they uh, of swimming and, and looking natural uh, in, in three mile an hour current patrolling? Here's one thing to me about pulling big bait. If you're pulling big bait, you kind of rule out a lot of smaller fish. If you're looking for big fish, you kind of rule out as long as you keep that South Carolina stinger off. Thank you. I do not. I've never used a stinger hook in my life. I do not like a stinger hook. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but I, I was just going to say, yeah, that's why I've always liked big bait. I, I, you know, I, I, it, most of the time they say they could probably eat it, but I've never called it. I've never called a 15 pound striper on a, a 14, 15 inch rainbow trout or a big, uh, skipjack i never have not saying it don't happen but i don't think me personally we, we probably not as good as y'all guys but when we do fish we fish baits according to time of year and where we're at if it's which we don't really have winters no more but when it did used to get cold you would never catch us pulling a 10 inch bait in december or january mm -hmm. that makes sense yep. little bait that's just you know what we would do uh summertime you you nailed spring. it as far as we ain't got winners no more because man the last three years there's been no dang winner i mean it no. hasn't been right for what i do it's it hadn't at all no yeah no because we used to we used to go you know five six eight years ago ten years ago we would we would go every thanksgiving and every thanksgiving it would be in the 30s maybe even 20s yep it's 70 degrees yeah. thanksgiving now i, I don't need uh, to wear um, that climate change is a bitch, isn't it? Yeah, you need to lay out the hairspray. <laughs> For real, right? It's <laughs> Damn. It's been a couple of years since I had to put on the... Uh, well, I can't tell you if it's the climate change, and I can't tell you if Biden made gas go up. But all I do know is it don't get as cold as it used to. I don't, I don't think the president's the makes the gas shit. go up. You know, the gas is high as a camel pussy. <laughs> Lake Wiley Spring Flood. And I don't know if you've ever bought any of that, but that's expensive. I don't know who you are. It just says Facebook user. So I apologize for not knowing, uh, it not showing your name. But uh, Lake Wiley Spring Flood. You remember uh, about five years ago, we had a flood. It was coming over. It was coming over all the dams. Like our dams couldn't control it. And it was just an extreme flood. And I actually put in in the. Uh, the upper portion of Wiley there at 74 bridge there at Dales, I put in there and I was fishing right in front of 74, you know, the community hole, everybody fishes right there. And I, I threw an anchor and I had a knife ready because there was these big grass mats and big mats of like trees and everything cross railroad ties, like you name it, it was coming down the damn river and you had to be ready in case, you know, a big, uh, that, that hit your boat. You'd, you'd want to cut your anchor. Otherwise it would pull your bow under and swamp your boat. You'd be in trouble. But that was one of the best bites I've ever been on on Wiley. But that was catfish, you know, it wasn't striper. You know, it was absolute chocolate milk. It, it, it was way less than six inches of visibility. I would I would say it was it was zero visibility, and I was actually using, and it was very rare for me to do this, but I was actually using grocery store baits. I was using chicken, and I caught twenty fish that night, and I bet you or maybe it was the daytime. I think it was in the daytime. And I bet you the smallest fish was 15 to 20 pounds out of those 20 fish. We were catching fish anywhere from 20 to 35 pound fish. And we caught like 20 of them. And it was the best bite I've ever been on on Lake Wiley. And that was in extreme flood conditions. But that's when, that's when Jeff Manning does good. The rougher it is on Wiley, the better Jeff does. <clears throat> Jeff Manning. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Jeff Peel there for a second. Let me ask you guys this. Let me ask you guys this. Here's a question for you Tennessee fishermen. Tail races in Tennessee. When you're having a lot of flow, and let's say the river portion, even the lake portion, all the way down to the majority of the lake is dirty or 
very dirty or mu- or even muddy. Is the tail race clear in those conditions? Is the tail race still clear? Mm, I mean, I have no idea. I don't really. I, I've never. I don't. I don't bull fish that much. That would be and a good question be, for Anthony I, Johnson, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is an AJ and a Daryl Barnes. The cow, yeah, you need the concrete cowboys on here to answer that. <laughs> uh, I know but, when you're in uh, Cumberland and they blow that horn, you don't go anywhere because it's getting ready to be fire when them logs start rolling down. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, the first time I took Lori to Tennessee with me, uh, we had put in down there at Carthage, and I was doing a live video. And I was like, look at all this shit floating down the river. They was fucking trees, logs, drink bottles. I seen a soccer ball. Um, and Chris, do you remember that? Chris called me. He said, he said, that ain't gonna be there long. They just cleaned the dam out. Do you remember that, Chris? It was like mm-hmm. trees and shit, logs floating. Now, what is that they do when all that shit comes out? Is that just where stuff's built up against the dam and they just let it go over? No, no, no. They don't, they open up the spillway gates and it goes through it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they opened them spillway gates. And they got to. They can't let all that just keep building up on the dam. I know about 15 minutes later, it finally, we just sat there. I got kind of weaving through it. A few minutes later, it's like it just all went away. I was fishing to go put the boat on the trailer and say, fuck it, we're going back to we going back. Yeah, to it makes hotel. it tough fishing after that for a little while. It makes it tough when they let that much water out. And uh, well, you're, talk, you're talking about my sting hooks. Don't you think, like, uh, and I don't know, I'm – not experienced with the river fishing i've done it but it seems like them fish in the river and i guess it's because of the flow and how fast the water's moving it's like when they decide to attack a bait they attack a bait and like you don't really need a stinger because they're going to attack that bait but like in a reservoir i'm sure you've seen them you've seen them try to kill a bait you know just keep rolling on a bait smacking yeah, a bait. smacking it yeah mm-hmm. and a lot of times you'll look up and they'll smack that stinger hook so they will. Then you catch them. Then that ten pounder by the tail comes you forward. Think you got Judy. <laughs> <laughs> you think you got Judy, but it does yeah. seem like in the in the you know especially when you're fishing at high current uh, in any of them small rivers. It's just a, to me I, not quite as analyzed as uh, our buddy who's gone for right now. Um, <laughs> He's listening from afar. You know. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's just a reaction bite. When it comes by, they just got to get it. I mean. And they know from experience they can't play around with it because it's going to be gone. Nope. Like, forget. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In or out. That's a fact. And that's just, you know, and if they're there, they're there. And if they're not, you know, there's places in that river that we know if you make two pulls and nothing, you just might as well go on because they are not there. And it ain't like they coming. And then, and there's spots in the river where are ninety percent of the time dead spots too. I'm sure, like with most rivers. Yeah, and that's usually where, like, when you're taking new people, you'll want to take them there and set up. <laughs> Some sometimes the fish might come through there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I got to change subject here real quick, Scott. I'm pretty damn disappointed. Is Heather around? Yeah, she's got she's her head there somewhere. I mean, St. Patty's Day was two days ago. What the fuck is that shit doing behind you? I expect to see like Fourth of July shit back there already. This East? No, you got to do Easter. Well, Easter, right? Easter. 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 I mean, I'm she's slacking. Pretty- like normally, it's prop. Like it's the day of. All right, time to take that shit down. Put the next up. I mean, come on. Damn, I, I don't think Pete was banking on Heather hearing him. I don't care. I ain't scared. <laughs> his, his heart just <laughs> dropped. I ain't scared. I you tell you what. what Hey, you ain't scared to say something about insurance companies. And what happens. Oh, hell. The crooks. They're all crooks. <laughs> so, Hovis, back to you. We don't get you on the show often. So let me ask you another question real quick. What what water temp are you really looking for? Let's let's say, you know, right now it's 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 getting ready to be it's late winter, early spring. Water temp is upper 50s <laughs> to, to 60 degrees around here. Uh, would now be a good time to travel to Tennessee? Say middle what? Tennessee. It's all according to where you're going in Tennessee. Say middle. Right. Say say middle Tennessee. We keep on bringing up the candy for it. Let's say so the. If you, so, so if you're going to Middle Tennessee, I mean, yeah, if you're going to Middle Tennessee, I mean, me personally, I want it above 55. Well, it, it may not be there because the water temp no, right now right. here is 58, so it'd be a little early. 
That's so why it, it is a little early, but you can still you can still go. There's they they catch them on the canning fork right now, right? But right. we always choose a time of the year that's kind of almost guaranteed mm-hmm. versus you know from now till the middle of April. Can you catch them? Yeah. Can you catch them in the canning fork right now? I mean, yeah, but well, you don't want to wait on the rain to stop. And they they stop the flow, so you kind of got to find that happy medium. So like early spring, now maybe why? the next. So uh, you so you just want to fish flow. You don't want to fish flat water. Well, I want to. I don't want to fish low clear water. I think that you got a better chance if you can fish some uh, some current, some rising water that's dirty. And well, uh, if I was to go fish right now, I wouldn't be fishing flow water in the tail race. No, we're well. We're not talking about a tail race. We're talking about oh, a river. Yeah. I wouldn't fish a river right now. Right now it's a little early for a river. If I was going to go fishing right now, if I left today, I would would never make it to Middle Tennessee. (laughs) And I could see the dam that I was fishing below, but I wouldn't be right below the dam. Mm -hmm. I know where he would go. He would go East Tennessee. Uh, He would go fish... Uh, right befo- b- below, uh, <laughs> right, right, yeah, probably, probably within a mile of Chickamauga. <laughs> oh, within a mile <laughs> of Chickamauga. Am I right? Chickamauga Dam. Yes. I hit it. I hit the nail on the head, didn't I? Well, that's where Billy would I be. Didn't? Damn. I thought I, was, I thought I did. No. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell him, Chris. He knows where. Ain't ain't but there's seven people watching. No one cares. Yeah. There's twenty four. No, no, no. Oh, no, it's not no secret. I mean, if you would, if I don't know if any of you, maybe Jr. has fished any of Tennessee fifteen years ago. It was totally different. Now. There ain't no secret spots between WW Internet and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and and all <laughs> the W Internet. What was yeah, that? all the new guides pumping up their business. I mean, you know, if I was over there guiding, I'd be live every day because that's what a, that's what builds the business up. There's some particular YouTubers that make it pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. So, but if I was over there, if I was going right now, I'd be below the Watts Bar Dam in Chickamauga. Yeah, where Billy is. <clears throat> yes, the hey, trout, Billy, the did, trout just, do hey, Billy did just catch a sixty in low clear conditions a couple of days ago. He did. Yeah, he caught a sixty a couple of days ago. Who did? Yeah. Billy. Billy Davis. Big old fish. Oh wow. Yeah. Alive, baby. That must be Anthony. Daryl. Oh, it's Daryl. You can see. I wonder, yeah. could you see a could you see a big rock wall in the background? Nah, you know, Billy loves taking pictures, and now he's a professional editor. Uh, yeah, so you can't his backgrounds. You might not even look in his background because. Well, you know where the big rock wall is. That should be good right now, huh? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, what is it, Tennessee River? Are you scratch the bottom of the boat? <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? No, where I scratched the, we scratched the bottom Not of the you. boat. Not you. I know you scratched every rock in Tennessee. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> maybe, maybe, the, the pe- maybe some upper, no, not, I'm saying the peach orchard, not the peach orchard. You talking about the rock wall? You talking about the rock wall on Mountain Hill Lake? No, down, um, what's that? Is it Loudon, Tennessee? The Tennessee River up there where the, the broad. Yeah, the broad. The broad river. Yeah, yeah we've we've the broad been or, there too. The broad or the French broad? French broad. French broad. I mean Yeah. The one that comes out of Douglas. Yeah. So what's your favorite bait in Tennessee, Chris? Uh I mean, I can fish either one, trout or gizzards. What about skipjack? If I'm if I'm, cu- if I'm fishing on the bottom. Skipjack. Skipjack. If you're cut baiting. Yes. I learned a lesson when I was with Chris and he just let me do it anyways. 
put a skipjack out on a balloon with braid <laughs> and let it sit about 20 minutes and pass the boat about three times and then reel it in and see what you got. <laughs> well, if you let it go about an hour, you can cover up with that blanket when you pull it out of the water. Now, now Scott Perry, when he cut baits, he doesn't use any weight. He just uses he just allows the the weight of the large piece of cut bait he's throwing to be. His uh, weight. You say that, but it depends where I'm fishing. I am not going to fish Cumberland with no weight. No, it might be top water. Not fish. unless you top water fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've fished with him, and yeah, we we fished uh, no weight, and uh, that's. That seems like a terrific idea if, if you can get away with it, like you guys said. If you're, but you know, that's if, that's if, before they release water. If the yes. current allows it, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want your bait getting swept, and and that's basically up. from being lazy because then I can just use my free lines. As and for anybody that might, I'll give you another little tip here. Um, for anybody who does go and try the caning fork, there is kind of this uh, line in the water up there that you'll do. 10 times better with gizzards than you will trout. There's a, a line. Li a line in the water. A li a line are you talking about a, once you get so far up the river? like a point, Or far, or, or so far down the river. When you so cross the down. line, one line's better with gizzards. And well, what's the line? The you got to figure that part out. The ball field? <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I was just letting you know that you'll do better on one of the. I, I, I took I, I took my kayak up there one year and put in at the ball field and fished. I don't know about a mile north of the ball field, and it was it was so freaking shallow, and I I was seeing fish like bust. I don't even know what they were, but I got skunked. I've been I've been to Middle Tennessee twice in my kayak. Got skunked both times. I think if you're gonna kayak, I would like to do it. We have kayaks now. If I'm going to kayak the caning fork for striper, I'm going to put in at the dam. But now at i got to have somebody to catch me down there. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, is, Chris. Just let me know when you want to do it because what you're talking about, you're going to need two vehicles. And that way we can. I don't uh, know if I can see Hovis in the kayak. We can park one vehicle. I'll sit on top of it. <laughs> where we're going to put out, where we're going to where we're gonna get out. We'll park one vehicle there. And then we'll drive the kayaks up to the dam. And we'll or where are you going to put the bait tank? <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing is, is you really, you really don't need. No, you don't need a big thing. You can cast your follows and catch giant. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. I won't. No, no. I still want the live bait, but you know, you need your little rooster tail because right up there at the dam, you're going to catch you a, a good trout. Um, there's right trout, there. Well, we can stop and buy trout and we can keep them on the bait tank on the back of the truck with the kayaks, you know, we can just have everything strapped down and where are you going to put them when you get on when, the kayak? When we, when we get there, I have a cooler, I have a Hobie Outback and I have a, I can put a cooler on the back with aeration and a, a, a cooler with aeration will keep a, a, a handful of trout alive. Will it not? I mean, we're not talking about, it's not skipjack. It's not, Blueback herring. It's not gizzard shad. The Did you trout, paint trout the aren't. They're not that hard to keep alive, right? You need to paint the inside of your cooler black and no, put this, some this, this oil is, That's for skipjack. <laughs> now we can do that, and uh, we can also we can have a couple of rods with some uh, some big red fins or whatever tied on, and we can we can go we can, basically we'll go fish it just like we do the Catawba. You know, on certain areas of the Catawba. If I did that, I would probably just use big swim baits. Let's go do that this spring, Hovis. Let's but, go do that for real. See, I'm lazy. I ain't a chunker winder. But yeah, it ain't bad though if you do a little underhand throw, and that, especially on that, you know the spot you want to hit. It ain't like you're gonna be casting that thing all down river. You're gonna have Chris to Hovis. Chris Hovis, Hovis won't even go fishing in a fucking sea arc. You know he's not gonna go fishing in a damn Hovis. Kayak, let's go it. do it, buddy, <laughs> in a kayak. Oh my god, talk about. I think it'd be video. fun to be pulled around, but you know. It's nothing new. So if you go on YouTube, plenty of people have done been pulled around Listen, by a 30 pound stripe. I, I have ordered a puck for my kayak. I'm going to take my co pilot riptide off my boat. I'm just going to pull the little bar out and slide it off the puck. And I'm going to put it on the puck on my kayak. All I need to do is get a lithium battery from a 24 volt lithium battery from my kayak because the two 12 volt lead batteries are just too freaking heavy. But I, I, am, selling, I am this close to having a co-pilot on my Outback. And here's the only thing that I'm maybe disappointed. Three brand new lithium batteries, by the way. I got to upgrade, so might be an option. 
here's what I'm disappointed in what's never happened that I know of. And it was close to happening, but never did. There was a guy that we know that was going to get a um, pink flamingo. And as soon as we got the fish hooked up, he was going to fight it off the pink yeah, flamingo. We'll see. We can do that. <laughs> I will fucking do that. <laughs> I have but a unicorn. It, it never happened. I don't have a pink flamingo, but I have. I a, remember I have something. I remember something about that story. How did that become to be? Well, Mike uh, says it was his idea, but he's full of shit. It was not his idea. But if Mike idea wants was to, it? it was a somebody else did it. Somebody did it on YouTube years ago. Uh, so they did it on a unicorn float. Anyways. Uh, we could go do that. That would be so. That would be so fun, man. Could, yeah. You, you guys need to get kayaks. You guys need to get kayaks. Wes is selling his boat. Wes, you're gonna have to get a kayak. How else are you gonna fish, bro? I'll get a kayak with Shane yeah. Real. Let one. Lacey at, Lacey <laughs> messaged me today, Wes. He said, "Is Wes gonna stop fishing?" I said, "Man, I said I don't. I don't think so." I said, "I know he's selling his boat. I don't know what he's gonna do, but I don't think he's gonna quit." What are you gonna do, Wes? You're selling your boat. You, are you getting out? Are you retiring? Hold on. Let me. I'm gonna interrupt you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what Wes is gonna do. See, Wes, say I don't. I don't own a boat no more. And let me tell you how many times I can go fishing with with uh, with the dude here that pulls the wire, or or somebody else. Let me tell you how many times I can fish for thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> probably the rest of my life and i ain't got a real spool no lines i ain't got to do this i ain't got to do i just gotta show up and get on the boat well, well you... that we're trying to buy we're trying to buy a new house that forty thousand dollars plus a lot of equity in a house instead of sitting out there under my shed losing well listen equity, you so. need to take about 1500 to 2000 of that and buy yourself a nice kayak hell yeah well, i agree no <laughs> hey you, you hold your Bring life, man. <laughs> hey, Hovis, when 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 Wes time. sees when Wes sees me and you pulling in some forty plus pound stripers in Tennessee on some kayaks, he'll go get him one. <laughs> Dude, you, you know I can't breathe anyway. Can't you see me trying to paddle a Cadillac? Well, that's why you. I, I, well, you know you could put a damn trolling motor on or something. Dude, listen, listen. Let me tell you the number one rule: you don't get in a kayak up there in hillbilly hell. Did you ever see Deliverance? <laughs> You know, Deliverance would have won a bunch of awards if it wouldn't have been for the Godfather. They got robbed. Well, hey, if you if you go to uh, Bikini in the summer, you'll be in the whole group of kayaks up there. That's a fact. There'll well, be somebody we, to help you. But we'll be the only ones fishing. They're all yeah, recreated. They they all... Oh, yeah. They're a bunch of hippies. They got teeth. Duh. Rich hippies. That's who does that. Guys, it's been a great show. Thanks for coming. Here we go. We done. Done. Go. Oh my God! Why, why do you guys like to just prolong? Well, go to bed, we've, Junior. Good night. We've talked about everything. What else is there to talk about? We just it's talked. Curious, about. Are you going to uh, Middle Tennessee this year? Rumor has it. No. I get me a new hip next Tuesday. Yeah, I seen something about you said you're going under the knife. Wait a minute, yeah. really? You're, you're, you're having a hip you replacement. Hit? Damn, it sucks getting old, huh? It sucks getting old. That's a fact. Hey, <laughs> no matter what, I'm still going to talk shit about you. It's all good. <laughs> hey, you get a, you you get a taller hip? <laughs> a bigger hip? <laughs> hey, hold us. Hey, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm going to ask Bolo something. Bolo. Well, are you going to grow a couple? Hey, with, a, with a replacement, you're going to like get a little taller, maybe? Bolo. Shut up, shut up Pete. Have let you him, ever caught a 30-pound Freshwater striper? No, no, I'm not. Twenty, twenty pound? No. Fifteen. Uh, biggest one's like nineteen, twelve, something like that. Inches? <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> it's actually kind of high rock. Touché. You? Oh, you caught a nineteen pounder on high rock? Nineteen, twelve, a high rock, yeah. Anthony caught a 19 and a quarter over there on <laughs> Inch, inches, inches. <laughs> Clarify. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the I'm gonna beat Pete's 19 pounder probably in the There's next There's a difference three between weeks. NC striper and anywhere else striper. Just I, know, I'm talking clarify. about I'm talking about NC, bro. Now if you was a you can you can catch him. It's all it's getting almost Pete. too late, but Chris, Pete, I'm talking about I, I know NC. where, man. Just you know I'm gonna catch just, an I mean, NC kind of striper in the next three weeks in the next month 
in North Carolina on the Catawba chain. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat your 19 on the Catawba chain. All right, okay. Watch yeah. shoot right. for nine first. I'm okay. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you beat that 19, I'm gonna fucking get that damn bait tank at my shed and I'm gonna beat your dang 22. No, okay? you're hey, not. Chris. No, you're not. Damn right I am. You can't um, outfish me, Pete. In, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, all right. So, um, as far as striper, as much as I'd love to fish this time of year for striper, uh, for something bigger, I would. I'm, you know, I'm really trying to get that three plus pound crappy. So that's who is right, this? Uh, that's, that time that's hey, way up on my list. Who is hey. this? Somebody tell me who this is. <laughs> what, what is that? That's Shane Real. Rody, tell me who that is. Where is Rody? Where this is, is Facebook is? user? Huh? Where is Rody? Rody I have is. no idea, but yeah, Rody not, is. it's not going to be there. Is a good option, but I can know. assure you, it's that not was Rody his. I know Rody a little is. place, by the way, that has some big striper. That's not Road his or the Catawba chain, but oh, it's Lee. Lee could have been on here with us tonight. Yeah, Shane. Um, Shane Real knows the lake that I'm thinking of. By the way, you probably do too, Hogus. But uh, yeah. yeah, but you ain't gonna take your boat up. It. No, I am Lee. not. I am not. No. Not at all. I got a question. Okay. So, I, you know, older I get, the faster these years go by. So it might have been two or three years. You caught a big North Carolina striper, didn't you? With Dory? Mm-hmm. He yeah. did. Hickory. He did. Yep. Yeah, and we're in Hickory. Yep. No, we're, Hickory. we're not. We're not. We're not going to say. We're not going to disclose where that was at. It was a good fish, hey, though. Damn I got good a fish. What that fish? Hey, uh, wait a minute. I Let me go ahead. Wes, as soon as you're done, it's my turn. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Wes. That's why you raised your hand. We're in kindergarten, JR. Yeah. Uh, right. No, uh, supposed to be going to Venice this weekend, Chris, and we got blew out. We may still go for two days. I'm not sure yet. But if not, we're going to Tennessee Friday and Saturday. If you were going to Middle Tennessee right now, where would you fish? Middle Tennessee? Yeah. Or East? Middle. He's actually already answered this, Wes. He said that he no, would yeah. not. No, he said Chickamauga. He, he said, said he but not, we're going to Middle Tennessee. Tennessee. But we're going to Middle But JR, hold on, stop. We're going to Middle Tennessee. We're not going to East Tennessee. I heard what he said, but we're not going to East Tennessee. Okay. That's why I said, where would you fish if Trigger. you were going to Middle Tennessee? Okay. Trigger. If I was going to Middle Tennessee right now? Yeah. Martin Creek. Defeated? Nah, that's a no. The Peach Orchard. Hell, <laughs> yeah, I would go to Middle Tennessee and fish the Peach Orchard. Peach Orchard yeah. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah. That's way up the river. Yeah. That's exactly what way I would down do. The river. Uh, he wouldn't go is what he's saying. He's got to think that. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> but if I was going to go, mm, I don't know. Now, years ago, they they would fish the lower end of Cordell and Marks and do all right. I don't know if it's still well, the same. It's just so. It's just it. it's just like everything else. It's just so. Rumor has fish. it that Billy caught that fish at the steam plant up there. Do what? Rumor has it that Billy caught that fish at the yeah, steam plant. Yeah, I, I bet he did. I bet that's true. In Middle Tennessee. Did he have three balls? I bet that's true. The warmer water temps. That makes perfect sense. I must be blocked. I haven't seen this picture. <laughs> oh, I know I'm blocked. I got it sent to me, but I know I'm blocked. <laughs> okay. Well, is it my turn? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You and Dory caught a very, uh, a pretty sizable striper uh, a few years ago on the Catawba chain, Hovis. My question is, did you catch bait where where i told you and if not what did you catch that striper on and where did you get the bait we got the bait out of that same lake we were four or five miles up the river where we caught the bait so was it where i told you i don't know where you told me we i just, remember there's... very clearly that there was a special show and he even said exactly where he caught it at. So backtrack. I remember uh, too. Watch the where? show and he'll tell you exactly where he caught it at. I remember. <clears throat> yep. Do you? But there's too many people trying to catch trophy strippers in North Carolina, so I'm not going to. Listen, gonna Hovis, I sent you screenshots. 
of where I would have I told you to catch bait. You're you're telling me you didn't catch it there. No, 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 no. I no, no, no. I said I don't I don't know where you told me to catch bait. Oh, but we just go to where there's only there's only a few handful of places up through there to catch bait. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 I probably didn't catch it where you told me to catch it. You did okay. You didn't. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Well, I didn't okay. go that well, far. I didn't go that far up. Okay. Well, what, what bait was it that you caught it on? A gizzard. You caught it on a gizzard, a big gizzard, dollar bill size gizzard or? Yep. Dollar bill size gizzard. <laughs> dollar bill. Okay. okay. That's yep. not a big gizzard. That sure. makes sense. That makes sense because that, what time of year did you catch that? <laughs> Mid-March. Okay, so mid March on a dollar bill size gizzard that you caught on that lake. Yep. That, 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 was it that before tracks. or after climate change? That tracks. <laughs> it was during what moon phase. How, how are you a how are you a, a pilot? That explains why you're a first officer and not a captain. I just I choose a quality of life over money, you know. It's all the same. All right. Yeah, Spending that's pretty good quality of life. JR, if you're gonna, gonna go after this. Trophy <laughs> NC striper using a spinning rod or are you using a conventional rod? Let me let me tell you something. I got tell me I, something. Tell me something. Listen, Ho, Hovis and I. I've already I've already proved Hovis wrong. Hovis tried to put a cow cut up against a saltist, and I actually absolutely murked him. So if any of you guys have any reel that you want, I don't care what reel it is. Any of you guys have a, any reel that you want that you want to put up against one of my spinning reels? You just let me know. I'll bet you any amount of money, paycheck. For I've paycheck. got a Stella. I've got a Stella and a Talic. I'll put up against it. Well, a Stella, a Stella's a spinning you reel. Said I'm, anything? I'm, yeah, I'm okay, for. I'll, I'm I'm talking about conventional gear. I okay, will I'll put, put up. up I will it. put up one of my spinning reels. I got an Abu sixty five. Any of you guys that see you guys are you guys these you old older Gen Xers? I don't know what your deal is, Pete, but. You older Gen Xers, I can understand, but Pete should Everything's know my deal. Everything. that these spinning reels nowadays are freaking, they're more powerful than conventional no, gear. No. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's, a, here's a Stella is going to oh, catch yeah. a, is capable Poor of catching a bigger screen. fish than a, a conventional, any, what, we don't want name, name a Talica 25. A 25. A Talica 25. Wrong a hand. Position. Wrong hand. No, no, right no, hand. no. A Stella 10,000 will land a bigger tuna, a bluefin, a 200 pound bluefin tuna. It'll whip its ass better than a Talica hey. 25. All right. It's Chris. Go ahead. Ask, Hovis has got a question. Let him, let him go ahead and give his question before he dang hasn't had his shoulder surgery too. <laughs> Have your spinning gear ready. Keep it ready. Because around June, we're going to go test that spinning gear in the river. You're 0-1, Chris. I promise you, I give you my word. I bet it really, I literally will put the house on it. You don't, you don't own a spinning, uh, a conventional reel that will, that will, that can compete with a spinning reel that I have. I got a 14. Uh, okay. But, but, but li listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, you ready? You focused? Uh -huh. You got me, dude. I got spinning reels that will land thousand pound bluefin tuna. There, you you can't compete with that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Listen why do me. you guys think this? You guys that say that spinning reels aren't can't can't handle it. You y'all are the kind y'all are the guys that call spinning reels open face. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. can you hear me? Have Shane real knows. Have Your buddy ready. Shane real knows. And He's got June, a Stratic eight thousand. We're it's gonna go test it out bad in the river. Reel. Okay, on, on 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 striper, on a little old striper. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. I got a I got a a, a pin, I got a quantum cabo that would make short work of the biggest striper in the Cumberland. On the, okay, now remember, the Tennessee, now Tennessee remember, River, period. remember that's you're probably right, but you're not gonna be able to fish like a hundred pound mono. Uh, okay, and. Like so what, what size are we gonna line, be able to fish? What size line you're gonna have on? Oh, all right. Let's say fifty pound braid with a uh, fifty pound fluoro leader. Will that nah, work? we're gonna 30. be going with that big leader. Twenty five okay. pound. Leader. Okay, I see where you're. I see where you're getting. You're. You're. What you're implying is that I'm not gonna have the line capacity. Well, that's where you're wrong. I can okay. fish whatever size mono you want on that spinning reel and have plenty of line capacity. No, no, no. I'm not talking about line capacity. Well, what are you talking about? But just have it ready, and we'll go in June. Okay. Okay. Fuck stripers. I'm going to the damn beach and fishing for something else. 
in June. Hey, you guys heard this. We got it. It's on video. Is that, yeah. is that Japanese guy going with your feet? We're going on kayaks to Middle Tennessee in June. <laughs> no, we're not going to be on the kayak. There's, there's not a spinning reel made that will stand up to a Talica 25. You pissing in the wind. You talk well, you all about you crazy as happen. hell. You know Ball better happen. than that, Wes. Ball you happen. know better than Ball that. Hold you going to go out there in June and fucking crutches? I, I, I've I, got a Stella. I, what? Wheelchair? I've got a Stella 10,000. Wheelchair? What about a what about a Stella thirty thousand? You ready? To All right, time out. Stella don't make a thirty thousand. Yes, they I'm do. Out. So, Chris, how what's the rehab on that thing? Four weeks. I had a buddy that had his knee done. They had him walk in the same day. That's oh, crazy. Now, when you so I have the surgery Tuesday, and when I get out of surgery, you got to get on that walker and start getting it. Damn. Right Damn then, walker. So, that's like old man terms. Get a walker. What do you call what? it? What's it called? <laughs> it's how, a walker. How, how, long, damn. <laughs> how long does a replacement hip last? Did they got a warranty on that thing? I don't know. I didn't uh, I don't know if we got 10 years, 10,000 miles, or what we got. <laughs> Why, Chris? What actually yeah. happened with your hip? Just bad. I can't I can't, can't tell you the disease I got because then what's that? That is a Shimano 30,000 that I'm showing Wes. Thirty thousand. Stella, Stella, Stella. That's you got a Stella. That's a Shimano Stella. 30, Chris, 000. you got a, a bone disease. Yeah, where well, the blood hadn't flowed to neither one of my hips. I'm gonna, I'm going for this one in next Tuesday, and hoping uh, the middle of August I can get my other one done. Mm. Well, good luck with that. I know a lot of people that have it done, and they're back to a hundred percent. So yeah, I've just never been. I've never ever. Ever, never, ever in my 57 years had any kind of surgery. So I might be just a tick anxious. I've had a lot of them. I've been under the knife. Under, I can understand. Under, under I can understand. A lot. Tell, tell Dory to take video once you get damn drugged up. <laughs> oh, he's, I, sure bet, good. I bet Chris is going to be laying on the couch whining for four weeks. <laughs> Can you give me yes. a can you give me a sun drop? Hey, that, that first week it's gonna be he's gonna be a big baby. Oh yeah, now that the first two weeks is they say is tough. Yep, yep, you're gonna have an ice machine. You're gonna have this thing that straps around your, your hip and it's gonna flow ice water through it and it's you're gonna have some pretty good pain pills and you're you should uh I wonder if they'll let you have the old one to mount on the wall. <laughs> I'll next, ask. next to that deer head. Yeah. You'll make it through it. Hey, my 84 year old great uh, grandmother in law, uh, she's had both her hips replaced, one recently. And, you know, she, if she can do it, you can do it. If I'm 84, I ain't getting shit replaced. I'm nah, just me hey, man, these new 80 year olds, man, they're not like the old 80 year olds. These new 80 year olds, they're still well, I'm like, old 80. I'm going to be an old 80 year old. They're still hey, my, like going my dad out and is shopping. 76 and, years old, and that dude is tough as a fucking ox. I'm telling I mean, you. I man. can't keep up. Seriously. I can't. Heather, Heather's 82 year old grandpa has a Harley. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. These these old people nowadays, boy, they, 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 be cut, they, they be cutting the damn rug now. Wrong what head. Is, Wrong what head. is Wes studying so hard on? I'm reading the text. He's trying to find that damn you were talking about. <laughs> uh, well, if. Uh, if you and Bradford are going to Middle Tennessee, stop short. <laughs> yeah. Why would you just go to Percy Priest and Hybrid Fish? I would think, Wes, that, you know, Chickamauga is a lot closer for both of you. I don't know who I've said I've never this. been below that dam. I don't, I don't know, know who, I don't know who said about it down there. I don't know who said rink dam, but get off the damn internet. <laughs> Go fishing. You've been on the damn internet too damn long. I don't nobody call it in a goddamn rink dam. What What's is it What's it called? Who gives a shit? It's not called a rink dam. What is this? A skating rink? It's not. A, you don't know. So you don't know where a rink dam is. I know. What a, I know exactly what a rink, a rink dam is. A weird. A, a weird dam. No, 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 no. And listen to me once again. Listen. Oh Do you God, know where? <laughs> Do you know where? Rink Dam is. Let me tell you something. Do you I'm know saying, where Gunpowder is? I know exactly where Gunpowder is. I, yeah. I know where John River is. I know where all the places to catch bait. I know where all the little the spots to the striper hot spots on the Hickory and Road His and all these other lakes on the Catawba. But where is Rink? Dam? I know the Catawba better than you do. 
Where's I'm, right where's now? I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not discussing the Kata. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not discussing Kataba hotspots on this show. Do you know where Ring Dam is? I'm not telling you if I know. He don't know. Jr. I could I promise know. you. There's text nobody. Me at, text me after the show. I know. Trust me. There's, there's nobody. I've been, I've, been, I've been at a Ring Dam a whole lot more than you have. You there's probably no, ain't never even been there. Hey. There's nobody watching this show that's going to steal hot spots. Oh, yeah. It don't matter. I don't want one person. <laughs> I promise I you. I don't want one person. Let me ask you this. How many dams are on that lake? On we'll what lake? Huh? On what lake? Want me to tell on you? The dam, <laughs> on the lake where Rink Dam <laughs> is. How many dams are on it? Yep. We'll count the one above and the one below, and then how many? How many are rest? How many are they? Why did Jr. get so mad when somebody said Rodius and said Rank Dam? Listen, I don't. I'm not. What, what is it? Why are them my, words triggering you? Katab is my home. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about getting getting back into striper fishing a little bit, and I ain't trying to tell nobody nothing. <laughs> Mama, make a video. <laughs> I'll make a video. He's going to crash <laughs> the drone. Here's me, here's me putting in at the ramp. <laughs> oh, another skunk. <laughs> do, you, do you still have the drone? I do. I need. I got to buy some new propellers. I don't know how the hell I didn't kill it, though. He put it, in, he put it so far in Lake Russell. That, hey, that's a tough drone. Host. I really appreciate hey, the drone. I got a question. A good one. Oh, I got a question. I got a question, though. Seriously. Okay. JR, where is Rink Dam? You never answered him. I've never heard Listen, of it. That's been an excellent drone. The last time I used that drone was at uh, <laughs> the Hybrid Strike Bass Challenge. I went to take it up, and the battery died. I lost control of it. The battery died. It came down, and it and it broke another propeller. So I have to get a, a spare propeller. But the but the drone is absolutely fine. It's a great drone. I'm going to get some more propellers, and I'm going to get a lot more use out of that drone. Question. I tell you I got a drum. Question for Jr. Go ahead. Yes. Where's Rink Dam? Um, I, are you guys talking? Are you guys referring to a, a skating rink? Oh, I'm there, gonna find no, out. Thank nobody you calls it. On rink, nobody calls it Rink Dam. Nobody calls it that. That's like how uh, Anthony was making fun of me for not knowing where uh, Skipper Skipper's Creek was. Like Skipper's Creek was. That, uh, that's Creek actually was a fair that. game because Skipper's if Creek uh, was Rocky Creek. I'm like, why are yeah, you, you calling found out? You found out from, from me. We, you're going to have to read it to us, Chris. We can't see it. It says, I'm working. It says, I'm going to read it word for word. I'm working, I'm working. Had a two go, but damn, that fired him up. That's got to be Shane Real. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's Shane Real. Who else does Hovis text? Like I that? didn't text nobody. <laughs> Listen, man. Are you guys ready to go, or are we staying on? No, so, we're staying on. When you were talking about the drone, I've never been so miserable and anxious in my life as to take a drone up out of a boat. And I, <laughs> I told Heather, I said, I'm going to launch this thing, but it's gone. Listen, let me tell you something, Scott. <laughs> let me tell you something, Scott. You need to go back and watch our video where I lost that Alexander, drone. Alexander County. No, I was talking about my drone when I took it up a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that ruined my whole fishing trip. I was so scared I was going to lose that thing. <laughs> I'll be right back. What lake is Rink Dam on? Let's see here. <laughs> Rink it's Rink. Hickory. It's not Hickory. Uh, there it is, right there. I think they know where it is, and I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> you post on your Facebook so everyone sees it. In case mm -hmm. anyone has any questions. Tag JR in it. But, but <laughs> yeah. if you want to catch the large mouse, it's a good place to go. <laughs> so well, JR's got a buzz now. Hey, about another hour, that motherfucker will come on here. About another hour. He's going to be bouncing. <laughs> uh, so, Chris, when you get them bionic hip, we are going fishing. Bionic hip. Perry. Are they putting some fucking titanium in that shit? Perry, we, Perry, we tried to get you to go fishing, but you won't go fishing with us. So. No, we gave up. Good shit. We gave up. <laughs> well, went, yeah. Perry went fishing one time with us, and it's Shane. Shane real said, "He said, you going with us?'" I said, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> Last I heard. 
<laughs> he said Chris was going to tie all the leaders. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Middle Tennessee is a ride, man. That's a ride. Pulling a boat five and a half hours. See, here, here's the thing. In all seriousness, I would go to Tennessee. I really would. But, I mean, I don't want to go to Tennessee where I can go to the beach. Same drive, practically. You know? I mean. Well, I tell you, I just went to Tennessee with Walker. And and it's been three years. And that was just long enough to realize how bad it can suck. <laughs> so you're not going back anytime soon. No, I'll go back. But, I mean, living out of a hotel room and fishing daylight to dark. You got a room. Out. You got to really want it, you know. I'm I'll not say this: that like the dark. As far as fishing the beach versus something like that, um, it's a little easier as far as Tennessee or freshwater fishing because you ain't taking a beating, making a long ass run somewhere, you know, getting beat up by waves, the seas, whatever, and you ain't really got a lot to clean up afterwards. I guess. What are you talking about fishing? The thing the fishing trip at Tennessee is keeping the bait alive, no doubt about it. That's the hardest thing. But everything else, man, it's just, you know, it comes as it goes. Well, let me you tell you. Your bait alive. I'll, I'll tell you a little funny story because Chris will get a kick out of this because he knows Walker. But I I got a 40-gallon vest in my in the bed of my truck, and I, we put 30 trout in it. Or I put 30 trout in it, drive it all the way to East Tennessee, and I'm stopping a couple times, check on it, make sure everything's the batteries run, everything. We get there. And uh, Walker's got a five-gallon bucket dipping the dirtiest, blackest water you ever seen out of his bait tank. And so he, he's like, well, that's about as low as I can get it. And uh, so we put water in his tank, and, I mean, you can't see the bottom of it. And, I, and so I'm netting like two trout at a time, handing it to him very gently, and he's just chunking them from about six feet into that dirty ass water and he's talking about i'm trying to aerate the water so they <laughs> take up plenty of oxygen i mean he might be on to something i mean I, I, they all lived but it was probably bad i mean think about it think about it they only need so much oxygen they don't need too much oxygen maybe you were trying so you to, like to them... keep so you, pete you like to keep all your bait alive at the beach come on the beach anyway uh, Anyway. Yes, but uh, first of know, all, Pete doesn't use live bait ever. around here. I don't. Yeah, uh, well, you missed the conversation because you stepped away to pour a drink. But uh, I had to take beach a fishing. We catch the uh, the bait the same day, so it's not like we go through any you know jump through any hoops trying to keep it alive. So leave early in the morning, catch. Bait. I could see Pete out there in his speedos throwing a little three foot net. Herbert, why do you want to see me in speedos? What's wrong with you? So Peter, you talking about fishing yeah. off the beach? Surf fishing. Oh, so he's catching sand. Surf. So he's not catching shit. He's catching he's sand sharks. About in a boat or undersized off, flounder and sand sharks. That's offshore, offshore of the beach. So in a boat. Yes. Oh, okay. I got you. Uh, kingfish. No, you know I don't kingfish much this time of year. It's more so October, November. My uh, my friends are going our our annual fishing trip, which I have backed out of. By the way. Is going to be. But they're disappointed. They're they're not. I was hoping they, I was hoping they would be, but they are not. This he's going to Rink Dam instead. No, they're they're going to uh, Southport, and they're gonna they're gonna kingfish, and um, in May, middle when? of May. When? Hey, Jr. I found Rink Dam. By the way, it's at Alexander County. Alexander County. Never heard of it. North Carolina. Yeah, for us, the county of Sam. JR, when is your crew going to uh, Southport? Middle of May. So I actually got a 10 day vacation. I'll be down there. Eh, he has, if weather allows, but I'll be down there from May 8th through whatever 10 day is. Listen, 8th. I used a lot of my vacation this year with Wes Rose. And you skunked each time. Uh, no, Wrong I didn't. Person. We had a great, it was awesome. It was uh, great. But, but you ain't never we, skunked with me, brother. I know. Listen, I know. we had planned on going, uh, doing our annual trip in June. That was the plan all year long, all year last year. That was the plan. June, 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 June. Then a couple of weeks ago, everything changed. And they're like, let's go in the middle of May. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to have any time in May. 
and I, I don't want to. I don't want to drive all the way to the beach on Friday after I get off to off work, and then have to turn around and come right back on Sunday and have to go to work Monday because I get my time back June first. And they're like, "Oh well, you know, sorry, bud. Uh, you know." And I'm like, "Well, you know what? I'm just not going to go because I'm I'm not crazy about going to why Why are we even going there anyways? But whatever. That's that's what they want to do. So they can have fun. That's unfortunate. So. Scott, you raise your hand first, but I'm going to talk first anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, just, just let so me say I, I love, your, I love your little sayings, season? Pete. I love your little sayings, how that's unfortunate, and sometimes you say, indeed. You know, I just I just wanted to put that out there. That's Awesome. Sweet. All right, whatever. Okay. Anywho, Wes walked away. I was fucking talking to him. Never mind. Go ahead, Scott. I so, can still hear you, Scott. Yeah, I've got my headphones on. I still hear you. So, Chris, you commented on my post that that's a tough leg. Could you really know? Did you really know where we were? I had a really good idea where he was. Yeah. Well, my gosh, it's not a huge secret. Just fucking spit it out. Well, where were they? We were at rank. We were at rank. Damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> I mean, you were in East Tennessee. Yeah, where at, Jr. I can. I bet you a million dollars. You don't know where the fuck I was. Oh, why do you think where I? Where was that? So where, what lake is dirty right you now? Know, I think I, I think I got just as good a chance as Chris. No, Elvis, as Chris, Chris does he know where I was? I know where you were. Just give us the initials. Just give us the no. initials. No. <laughs> no, because that's a give. That's a dead giveaway. It was East yeah. Tennessee. It was definitely East Tennessee. Yeah, it was. No, East Tennessee. no, no, okay. no, no not was, really. Not necessarily. No, it was way East Tennessee. I'm gonna say. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead say, and tell him, man. <laughs> God damn, you just told him. <laughs> Listen, no, I, don't even, I haven't even done any research. I haven't really like eyeballed your footage or anything. But well, I mean, I'm not giving away shit off the top ahead. of my off the top of my head without doing any, without doing any kind of a deep dive. I'm, I'm Wes, say, if he tells me where this is, I'm gonna come straight to your house and stomp <laughs> your ass. I, I had said nothing. <laughs> hey, Jr. I, I, I'll give you a hint, Jr. It's the only lake that I've never took you to. <laughs> I'm going to say it was on North. North? Good guess. Yeah, North. that's it. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Hey, I didn't tell him, Scott. I swear I didn't. No, I'm just that. kidding. I don't give a shit. It ain't like we caught in big fish. <laughs> No, I was just curious, no, no, Chris, no. That, that's a tough lake, and I'm like. Yeah, don't mention that. Let me just tell you. If no, you ask me, lake, there is no fucking stroppers in that lake. So uh, I mean, it was uh, uh, Henry, well, uh, Norris, uh, Clinch River. It was, it was one of like four or five destinations. It's not like it. No, something. it's none of the above. And but I think Chris knows from what he said. <laughs> There's not a lot of fish, but there's there's quality fish there. It's kind of like our Russell. If you get a bite, it's going to be a big fish. There's, you're not going to catch no 10 or 12. I, I've never caught a, a, a 20, 15, 20 pound fish there. Do clothes hangers work? Uh, I'm sure they what's would the, for small uh, mouth the, and trout. What's the lake above? Uh, what's the lake above Watts Bar? Uh, Milton Hill. No, that's not above Watts Bar. That's north of Watts Bar. That's, that's on Watts the clinch. Bar. North is a black Wait a minute. Right? Now you've been what's, everywhere what's the... and done everything, but Melton Hill is not above Watts Bar. What brand of bourbon are we drinking tonight? Because I want two cases of that shit. I don't Melton think you Hill's do. above Watts Bar? And you've been <laughs> there and done that Watts more Bar? than everybody. <laughs> no, I have, Melton I have Hill is there. above Melton Hill Dam. There's Melton been more Hill videos Melton from Melton that Hill. dam than any dam in Tennessee. If, you, you, go, say, if you go to Melton Hill, it's the tail race is north of the of uh, Fort Loudon. So Loudon Watts is above Bar, Watts, Watts Bar. Watts Bar is below Mel Fort, Melton Hill. Fort Loudon the Reservoir above, is lake, above Watts Bar. So what are you guys talking above, about? The lake above Melton Hill Dam is Melton Hill. The 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 body of water below Melton Hill Dam is Watts Bar. There's what a, is the there's, body of water above what is the body of water above Wolf Creek Dam? Uh, uh <laughs> listen. That's no, that's still you, no, that's you, uh, you, you got what you got Fort Loudon. Fort Loudon Dam is the tail race on Watts. That's Bar. still the Cumberland. No, that's not the Cumberland. That ain't Kentucky Lake, is it? No, oh, but you got Chickamauga. You got Chickamauga. No, what lake is that, Chris? You got Watts Bar, <laughs> then you got Fort Loudon Reservoir. If you go all the way up, so Cumberland, no, Melton Hill is not, not <laughs> above Watts Bar. Fort Loudon is no, 
We're, we're talking about no, Oklahoma you're right. Loudon. You're right. You're right, Jr. Fort Loudon is above Watts Bar. Yes. Correct. So it was Melton Hill. You're correct. So is North. Correct. But I'm talking about the very next reservoir is Loudon above Watts Bar. It's according to which river you go up. The Tennessee River. The Clint now the Clint yeah, River. Tennessee and the little Tennessee. Yeah, I'm talking about the Tennessee River. Okay. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. But what but, lake is above where, Wolf Creek Dam? What's below Mountain Hill if Watts Bar is not below? Well, now Mountain you're Hill. talking about Middle Tennessee. What's below Melton Hill? Melton, <laughs> below Melton Hill is the Clinch River that runs into the Tennessee River. And the next dam would be the Chickamauga Dam. And what lake is that between Chickamauga and Clinch River Dam? Uh, that would be Watts Bar. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Hold on a minute. What did you say? It's kind of a trick question because the Tennessee River and the Clinch split (laughs) halfway up the Tennessee River. Yeah, but what what did y'all say below between Chickamauga Lake and what? What? Between Chickamauga Lake and between Milton Hill, what lake is that? If you get up above Wolf Creek Dam, you're in the Cumberland Lake. Swats Bar. That's Lake Cumberland. Rink Dam. Rink Dam. (laughs) No, ain't that right, Chris? Chris. Above Wolf Creek Dam is Lake Cumberland, right? Okay. Chill Howie is. Uh, <laughs> we're is we're way over here now. <laughs> yeah. Now we don't made a left. Right now. That's that's uh, Fontana. <laughs> Below Fontana. <laughs> Do I need to pour another drink all this damn fucking Tennessee talk shit? I've drank more bourbon tonight than you guys will drink all year. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I but can, let me tell I, you what. Let me I tell you out, what I can out drink everybody oh, on here. Week, you did not. Let me tell you, you what happens drink. when he gets a hold of some of that South oh. Carolina rabbit tobacco. Rabbit hey, tobacco. Oh, my Chris, God. He, hey, Chris, he said that he could out drink everybody on here, but I remember some videos from a couple of years ago. I don't know if anybody else <laughs> remembers. I, I was on a – I had taken a – I had taken a freaking ten year oh, break we from, go. from bourbon when I when I I brought JR. you a gift of JR a fifth of wrong. bourbon. Let's just say JR. no roofies were involved, but I didn't need them that night. <laughs> he let me drink JR. that whole fifth. No. Jr. came down. Jr. came down. I was with us on the tail race. Wound up. They just he brought Scott some liquor. Scott said, "No, we, you need to try this. We need to take the first taste. That's the way we do it down here in South Carolina." Six hours later, Scott was wanting to drop his ass off at a rest area. <laughs> Listen, Scott tricked me. I drained that whole thing. I remember seeing video about some damn fucking spiced bourbon and some other shit, and they while them two are laying in bed together, you know. Oh my god. Well, that was that? that was another trip. That was, that was another was drinking, trip. I was drinking hundred proof bourbon. That's what I drink. And hey, Scott drinks eighty proof. He drinks eighty proof molasses and he wants to try to act like he can hang with me. I drink hundred proof. West, he's he's like he takes a drink of my bourbon. He's like, oh man, that's too hot. That's that's hot. That's, that's, uh, that's let's spicy. get back to fishing before we lose Chris. He's already getting ready to get his hip surgery. He's like the hip surgery would be better than this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Wes, you hear me? Yeah, I got you. I got the headphones. All I'm smoking. Did, out did you hear what they're doing at grouper season? It was announced yesterday. One day. It's a month and a half only this year. Huh? Lee Huffman. A month and a half. You, I know what you're getting at, Lee. But you ain't never been there. You ain't never done that, brother. You can't tell me otherwise. You ain't got no jet boat. And I know you ain't took no prop boat up there and tore it up. So Where? Hush, hush your mouth. You don't, know what you, you don't know what you speak Where? of. So, Chris, in June, are you going to take JR to the uh, – to the uh, – the farm. Chris, I feel sorry for you. Um, so after your hip surgery, I'll fucking rig my damn boat to where you can then fish with a walker. <laughs> you want to do it? So, Listen, so, Pete, you're not going with us in June? June. We're going on. I was invited until just now, I guess. I don't know. We're taking John. We're going to a fucking kayak. No, sir. Why? Man, Why are you guys not, against kayaks? Oh we're not fishing out of a kayak in June. Why? Man, everybody, everybody out here, we've been talking for two and a half years. 
Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Hey, we're going to get together. And ain't nobody <laughs> never did shit together. I don't know. Y'all like, y'all just killing time. Ain't none of us going to ever fish together. Except me and John. Right. It's, I feel it's coming. Me and you and Scott. Within the, within the next fishers. five years. <laughs> Let's have a real fisherman tournament. I, I got some rod holders I'm going to send to Chris to put on his walker. What size <laughs> tubing? Right? Hey, I got clamps if you need it. Listen, I got clamps. I know y'all better bring a team with you because I fished with every one of you and ain't none of y'all yeah. outworking me. Hey, by the way, JR, when are we having this Lake Norman Crappy tournament that you were talking about? That, anytime, uh, you anytime. You, wait, put, JR, you're the only one on here that hasn't posted a fish picture in 10 years. Are you, sure, right? are you right? sure you want to fish against me? I just went and caught 40 slabs Friday night. Dude, uh, they ain't damn slabs. I wasn't impressed. Well, I don't know what to tell you. We call hey, 40 slabs. Hey, Chris, yeah. listen up. When you I retire with me. that new hip, you're going to have to fish for fucking crappy. That's <laughs> what fucking <laughs> <old> <laughs> Would you all agree? I ain't fishing for bait. Hell no. Agree with me. <laughs> Pete. Everyone here agree with me that night fishing is for those folks that don't know how to catch fish during the day. Everybody agree with me if you got a little plastic a tube, you got to stick to Oh, my God. In. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let me tell you guys fish. something. Crappy is, something. A, crappy is a meat fish. Okay? I wanted yeah. some meat. I normally catch and release. I wanted some meat. So we went Don't out. you have to fish at night to catch them? When's the last you? time you went out and caught 40 slabs? Bro, every day. No, it ain't no every day. Every You're day. lying. You're lying. Every water, day. water temps 58 degrees. You every ain't catching those 40 slabs. What did you catch in that last tournament? 12 fish? No, dude. I, I caught like 50 or Four, 60. 14 you know fish? It's a seven fish weigh-in. A seven fish weigh in, yeah. Motherfucker, if you knew how damn tournament fishing works, maybe you listen. You good. fished a yak and chain. There's no, there's right. no creel or size limit on the freaking yak and hey. chain. And you want to talk shit to a Catawba hey. guy? Hey. Dude, hey. I will mop the if, floor if I wanted with you. To catch 50, 60 fish. You have no I'm idea. You have no idea how to crappy fish. You guys are spoiled up there on the on the yak and. We are. are. We kind of are. All right, Chris's turn. Shut up. Yeah, huh? No, hey, I ain't done hey, yet. I ain't done yet. Arguing hey, about a fucking two-pound fish. Do you want to come fish with me and fucking uh, learn how to get it done right? Learn? They're arguing about a two-pound fish. Learn you three. I tell you, I'm not three. gonna. I'm not gonna deny. You ain't caught a three-pounder. You just said it. I've two, never met anyone I haven't learned okay. something. Ah, oh, two fifteens. Lake I Wiley, would, actually. That's cute. Would, I would, I would learn something from you. I have no you doubt. You don't need to pull the camera phone out for a 15. <laughs> Someone made like a post that would learn more when it, shit, when it, you know, I did all the time. One minute, one minute. I go ahead, Chris. You got the four. I just had to get the four for you right there. Oh, I that's it. I just said they are gonna over two pound fish. That's all right, Scott. You got four. Well, I was just saying that you go to Walmart and they got these plastic things and you're supposed to stick the fish in the plastic thing to see if you can take it home. Right. If I got to do that, I'm out. <laughs> I have to tell you right now, I'm out. Do they, hey, do they make one of those little plastic things for 20-inch fish? Just wondering. They I need love, to. I love, those, I love those plastic things. It makes it easy. It makes hey, it I'll easy. Right, in all seriousness, if I got to measure a crappy, I ain't fucking keeping it. Plain simple. You don't know nothing about measuring like, that's, crappy. That's you fish the yak right there, where I'm from. Pete, you're gonna learn more from me, crappy fishing than I'm. <laughs> Hell gonna learn no, from boy. You. Yeah, I, I, this boy don't night fish. I don't <laughs> I've forgotten night. more about crappy fish. I don't you know. need to night fish because I can catch them in the day. You, you, you don't even catch them on a. You don't even know how to catch them on a jig. West yeah. Rose can out crappy fish you, bro. The more I listen to this show, the more I feel bad for Ryan Spivey. <laughs> Ryan Spivey will he'll outfish every one of y'all motherfuckers on crappy. I know why Spivey took a break for a little while. Hey, Ryan yeah. Spivey won't outfish Damn. me on crappy. He'll outfish every one of y'all motherfuckers on crappy. Not me. I mean, I I'm his, wife, he'll fish me. his wife will outfish y'all too. Everyone this here Ryan Ryan Spivey, to go crap fishing. Ryan, hey, I could show I could show Ryan Spivey how to shoot a dock in about an hour and he'd be a master. Hey Pete, I'll go with you at the windows, right? <laughs> Every day, man. Every day. Ain't, ain't no damn window. <laughs> they are. Okay, hey, they are. Jared, Jared, tell them who the dock shooter is. Nine to five every day. Jared, tell them who Wes, the dock shooting master is. Wes can. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about the master. But yeah, Wes, Wes wants you to jack it for him, Jr. I do it. <laughs> He can, yeah. he can just get out the there and just work on it. Yeah, right. Wes surprised the shit out of me. That dude can shoot the hell out of a jig. Oh, you know, geez. Here we go. Man, wow. He, he you got to do a lot to get on a boat, don't you? Wow. You can shoot one. If you wow. gotta shoot docks, you know what? You you right. That's awesome. Oh my god. What what's the, awesome. okay? What what 
What's the alternative, Pete? Trolling? Find them in open water. Bro. Trolling in open water? Ledges, drop Are you serious? Oh no fish can strike there. No. Hey, hey, one thing, though, at least JR can use a spinning rod for crappy because, you know, ain't got to worry about getting spooled. Open faith. You know, what, kind of, what kind of spinning reel do you use for crappy, Pete? I have a Daiwa that I like a lot. I it's just a going a Daiwa? See, Daiwa yeah. see, he doesn't even know what kind of reel he uses. I'll tell you exactly what I use. I use a Tika Cetus 500. Wes, you got JR's password. Meet this motherfucker. Smooth as butter. <laughs> that damn bourbon get to his fucking head. Four pound maxima copolymer. 30 second ounce jig. That damn liquid courage, boy. Oh my God. It's, <laughs> you can't compete. You can't compete with me. Hey, uh, all bullshit aside, you know, seriously, welcome to come crab fishing me at any point. Let's do it sometime. This I'll summer. come. Why, I'll why, come why, don't, why, don't, I don't, why don't you come with me? Uh, I'm not going to touch a rod. I'm just going to sit there and drink bourbon and laugh at them little fish. Come on, then. Listen, Scott. You, you, your wiener's not that small, bro. Mm. You can catch. How do you know? Is that from that bourbon night? You don't have to catch. You, you can catch <laughs> crap. Crappy or cool. People that don't like that only want to catch big trophy striper and big trophy cat. Yeah, they, look, they got. It's like the guys that drive the big, the big trucks. I'm out. They're compensating. You don't. You need. It's time to stop compensating, bro. You're a middle aged man. You're you're confident. You're you're kind. I'm well past smart. middle age. There ain't no way in hell I'm making it. You're strong. You're fucking ninety something. You can. It's okay. Let, let, let me go. tell you, the people who catch crappy and brim, oh, the oh, people who can't real catch man. a forty pound striper, real oh, man. hell, that real be man, real man, Hovis, real yeah. man catch. Well, There's no real man case. catch a two pound fish. Hey, There's, I've there, got a forty. I've got a fifty. I got a fifty one. There's no oh, way oh, nobody that what? catch trophy striper would even think about crappy fishing. They wouldn't even have that in their arsenal. I would argue that. The best stripe trophy freshwater striper fishermen in the world are also excellent crappy fishermen. Hey, I have a hard time taking hope. We're talking about Anthony Johnson. Hey, I can't take hope <laughs> serious. That motherfucker don't even own a damn boat. Why do you need to own a boat? Because you know you can't you can't talk fish if you don't own a boat. Come on, really? Well, he he's got John Ryan's boat. I mean, it's pretty much his boat. Come on. Hey, zip it, old man, yeah. or break your fucking hip. Chris, did you consider JR's here? boat a boat? It's built by a, a company who makes pool tables. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Brunswick. Okay. Chris, have you put earmuffs on that boat? Because I know it needs some gas ran through it. Uh, it's got a great big tarp zip tied over <laughs> top of it right now. <laughs> oh, John's boat. <laughs> Boy, that old boat's caught some fish, ain't it? That's a yeah, fact. Right. Yeah. Well, they want yeah, hold water. Real, yeah. They got ripped holes Shane, in the bottom of it. Didn't Shane Real buy a boat or something that was right next door to Ron Vest over here by my house? Mm, he bought Didn't a, he buy he a bought, boat from that guy. He bought a boat from Daryl Barney. Um, and, uh, I think it's an some kind of jet tunnel boat. It'll run about forty eight miles an hour. What Daryl said? Daryl said that thing oh run about forty eight. What's it, it got? What's it got on it? It's got a one fifteen Yamaha. With a one stainless foot, steel prop, one, one fifth tunnel oh, it's hole. Gonna, it's an eighteen foot tunnel hole. So hold on. on top of the water, forty eight so, miles an hour. So hold on, hold on. You got a prop <laughs> on a tunnel hole boat, not uh, a jet. It's, it's a tunnel prop hole. Yeah, it's tunnel hole for, for a prop. prop, and that thing okay. will run forty eight mile an hour. All right, I believe that. I believe that. Forty eight. I thought I thought you were about to tell me you had he had a jet boat, a one fifteen jet boat that was forty eight. You say it run 48 miles an hour with a 115 Yamaha? Four, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who who told have you seen these numbers? <laughs> well, yeah. it's a it's a very light aluminum uh <laughs> tunnel hull boat on flat water with uh, current with current, uh, with, with with the wind. With the wind. Thousand dollars so you're gonna hit 48. By yourself, no gear. Not with Shane Real in it. It, it might hit 48. <laughs> JR. JR, well, yeah. Will your will a flat bottom boat run faster on slick water or four inches of chop? Four inches of chop. I asked Jr. Damn it, West. Well, I mean, sorry, con sorry. this conventional wisdom is going to tell me 
I mean, I know the answer is probably four inches of child. But I, <laughs> yeah, because West just told you. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, but I'm I, I I would I would I would I would I would say flat. I would say flat I, water. I pretty much don't think I would ever want to run a flat bottom boat in four inches of travel. Well, uh, at hey, Chris, forty-eight miles Chris, an hour. Chris, Chris tell him on why. A, tell him why it'll run faster on chop, Chris. I'll tell you. Because it ain't in the water. water. Exactly. It ain't, it ain't dragging the water. Exactly. No, right. it it's, coming no out, it's, it's, it's coming out of the water. But you also have to uh, bring into play uh, the wind direction. Like Something's causing that chop. So obviously wind. So if the wind's in your face. It don't matter. Or, or <laughs> the wind on, it is the matter. wind on your back or is it in your face? It don't matter. It don't matter. So the, it don't so matter. The, it's going to play the balls, you, the balls. You have less drag. The chop. Do what? The balls. The balls couldn't have created the chop. Yeah, like yeah, that would be current. So of course you're going to go faster with the current if there's chop versus flat water. If there's flat water, there's going to be the no current, current. Or against the current. Yeah. If there's go, if there's if it's flat, there's no current. So no, Jr. And when you when you're in chop, you've got less drag from your boat. Your boat's literally more on top right, of the water because on plane, on plane you have less uh, hydrodynamic uh, hydro. <clears throat> Friction. There's less friction because your boat is coming out of the water because of the chop. You're, JR, you're JR, JR, hold, on, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a little bored here. Oh, hold man. on. Let, 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 listen, listen. Do you see this picture right here that you've got posted? This is what happens when you can't catch big God, damn. mature stripers. Damn. You go largemouth fishing. And you, and you advertise that I can teach you how to crappy fish. This is what Damn, happens. Man, when he said, "I teach all y'all." Yeah, except Damn. the thing is, is he uses what he uses is a, a copycat. He uses those uh, fish stalker single tail small grub uh, soft plastics. That's a copycat, man. I got the original where I live on the Catawba. Oh hell, we got that. We got the original. You you, you ain't nobody want to be. He gonna he gonna fish that flip tail. That's right. That's that right. black flip tail. Hey, right. that flip tail is fire back in the day, boy. I, ain't gonna I still want to see a one fifteen Yamaha do forty eight miles an hour. That's all I want to see. Well, if it's on a fourteen forty two, it will. No it's way. on an eighteen. I, I mean, I got a friend that's got a one thirty Yamaha on a glass boat, a Ranger that's uh seventeen and a half foot long that'll do forty five miles an hour. It's the same block, different carbs. I could see a, a fifteen sixteen foot aluminum boat with propped right doing forty eight. It's not that. Can far you see out chain reel in a fifteen reality. foot boat? <laughs> I could see him in it. All we would see is Shane Real. <laughs> we like wouldn't donkey. see a boat. <laughs> like Donkey Kong on Mario Kart. Uh, okay. I'll see y'all. And the first time I met Shane up there at the dinner. Good night, host. Thanks for coming tournament. on, brother. Later. I walked up to Shane and shook his hand. I kept looking and he said, What are you looking at? What is it? I said, Hell, I was trying to figure out where your neck is. <laughs> he don't even have a neck. Are you going to, Scott? Yeah, I got work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to. I do, too. Good night, everybody. See you next week on The Real Fisherman Show. Good night, Pete.